Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal's Facebook Run 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to the preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. We are in the midst of the Mars window, so we have plenty of Mars missions to send out to the Red Planet, and what we have here is a return vessel for a crew that's already in orbit around Mars, well actually in orbit around Phobos. This is the station around Phobos where we are trying to pick up Kerbals from. And so there's Phobos. And so that vessel was sent out in the previous video to uh, retrieve them, but it's a little bit dodgy as far as its Delta V is concerned. To launch that return vehicle, we had used the Hide Launcher, which was a horrible assembly of things. And as a result, I decided to sneak in my old Kasei Launcher into the install, this newly revamped version of the Kasei Launcher and use that to send further payloads out to Mars. So first we have a supply module. This is just FUBAR and oxygen. We've used it before. It aero captures in Mars's atmosphere in order to uh, get to where it's going. And the Kasei launcher has five Hydrolox engines on the core and uh, five methane oxygen engines on each of the boosters. So a total of 20 methane oxygen engines and five Hydrolox engines. So off go the boosters. The boosters are derived from the Sagita launcher. And here goes the core. And on the upper stage is a single vacuum version of the engine that we have on the core. It's sort of like an Ares 5 if the RS-68s were actually good. Uh, if they had a decent thrust weight ratio and didn't have those pipes sticking out that make it horrible to cluster them. But anyway, here we are in orbit with enough propellant to transfer, with enough delta V to transfer out to Mars, and here is the transfer burn. Everything is very simple with this launcher, it has very well known payload capacity, though we'll be pushing the limits of that later in the video. It's actually more optimized for low Earth orbit than for Mars, but it's good enough for Mars as well. Uh, the upper stage engine is rather heavy, so, but in this case it's not a problem. I go about trying to design a new vehicle using ion engines and explore which ion engine propellant is actually best. So here we have it, uh, you can see the formidable Delta V there, 35,000 in 38 days. But the problem is in the SPH we can't really see the right Delta V and burn time numbers so I have to constantly load up uh, different propellants to check them out, uh, cheated into orbit to check out what the numbers actually are. I ultimately decide on argon gas as a happy medium, uh, though that means that it can't be refueled by all our xenon gas ships already sent out, so that's worth noting. KSP Addiction is a paying tourist who wanted to go out uh, just to low earth orbit, not even docking at a station. And so I put KSP Addiction in the Lynx capsule, but put the propulsion portion of the ship that I was building, which I ultimately called the Hammerhead, uh, which is somewhat inspired by the Hammerhead, I forget what it was called, Hammerhead Eye Thrust or something like that from uh, Top Gear. Anyway, so because it's electric, right? Anyway, uh, so off go the boosters. So KSP Addiction will go on his own way while the propulsion module will wait for the big habitat module on the ion ship. And here's the ignition of the upper stage, which later in the video we'll see is a little bit dodgy. And we are making orbit. So, we separate off the links from the rest of the stuff because propulsion module. We'll keep the propulsion module with the stage because the stage can help it get to Mars, but we'll have to link up the HAB to it first. So yes, off goes KSP Addiction with an underfueled service module there with the links. And here we are sending the HAB module up to link up the propulsion module. And this carries CG Matt, who presumably wanted to go to Mars, because that is where everything is going. And nice clouds we have here. It's actually pretty impressive how pleasant the clouds can be in Kerbal Space Program of Environmental Visual Enhancements. Off go the boosters. So exclusively in this video we'll be using the Kasei launcher because after last 
video, I decided that enough was enough as far as the bizarre launcher designs for a while. So, the Kasei is a nice streamlined launcher. I made it after all, so... And there we are making orbit with the Hab plus a cupola. The Hab itself doesn't allow for EVAs out of it, so we added the cupola to allow for that, and that turned out to be very important. So here we are docking with the propulsion section. And there we have it. So each of the stages will help us get to Mars. We'll burn one first and then the other. And this is the ignition of the first one. Providing less than half of the Delta V, of course. And then once that's done, we need to separate it off, flip around very, very slowly. So, not the most accurate burn ever, but ultimately we ignite, and we have plenty of Delta V to finish the transfer burn with. At this point, things were looking pretty good for our tourist CG map, and he will be in the midst of quite a lot of missions. You can see all the orbits we've got there going all over the place. Most of those are actual missions, uh, not debris. We've uh, cleared most of the debris. And so yeah, just around Mars, that's what it looks like. And that's after we parked things in orbit around Phobos and Deimos. So, lots going on. This was a correction burn. And this was largely because we had to do the turnaround and that took an extra bit of time that made the transfer inaccurate. But it turns out that I put the payload on the wrong node it seems, or it wasn't decoupling from that. I thought Oh, that, it ended up being an interstage base, and it wasn't supposed to be an interstage. We wanted it to be a regular fairing base, which would have a decoupler at the top of it, but uh, it was the wrong kind of thing. I wonder how that even happened. Oh, that was because we were carrying the Lynx capsule on top, that's right. So, yeah, I had failed to put a decoupler, so CG Man had to use the EVA capability out of the cupola to destroy everything. So, no harm done in the end, but... Just a little bit of a bother. That is why we always make sure to have EV capabilities, or at least, well, now I do. Anyway, the Lynx capsule with KSP Addiction needs to complete its mission. KSP Addiction wasn't going to any station in particular, and so I just deorbited the Lynx capsule. And so a quick jaunt into low Earth orbit was completed. And here comes KSP Addiction back into the atmosphere with a glorious sunrise there. And of course we eventually hit the hot part of re-entry with a fair amount of g-force. Especially since uh, I don't have the scent mode on this capsule right now. And finally safely on the parachutes above the ocean. And a good splashdown. No problems there. Fairly routine. And we turn to further Mars missions. This is the launch of an Erezine and NTO tug. So this is hypergolic propellants that are storable just in case we have issues with boil off. This tug can help out with things. And so there go the boosters. And the core, just as we hit space there. And fairings. And it's just the same sort of vessel, but it'll get itself into orbit around Mars. It doesn't have a, a heat shield, inflatable heat shield to aero capture. Since it is a tug, it has plenty of Delta V, presumably. Okay, and we do need some of the tug's fuel to finish up the transfer. And so, waiting for decoupling here. There we go. And it's the Lunar Gemini lander engines that we're using on here. And here is the orbit coming in. It's always very sudden here. Everything has to be very precise. There it is. Up. Fortunately, these engines do throttle. So that makes it easier. 
Next up, I decided to contemplate a lander for Mars, yet another different lander for Mars. I'm always coming up with these. This one, a capsule-shaped one, as you can see, uh, with the Mark 1-3 pod, out of all things. And what brought me to this, I have no idea. But I decided to put the engines like that, put them on the fuel tank, and then put the heat shield right there, and see if that would work out. Um, I get the feeling I didn't want Jeb, Bob, and Valentina on here. I'm not sure. Almost certainly not, since we don't have the supplies for them to go all the way out to Mars. The food, water, and oxygen is just enough for a landing. So, yeah. Definitely don't want them on board, but it's it's not a big deal because, as it turns out, uh, the engine gets knocked out here. <laughs> That's why I said the separation was a bit dodgy. And so we, of course, have to add Separatrons to make that a little bit better. And this time we are launching without Jeb, Bob, and Valentina on board. Will this actually turn out to be a good lander for Mars? Well, we'll find out, but it's not the most convincing design. I do have my Goku lander, which was for the moon, though. And that's, you know, fully pod-shaped, but that's sort of for a different purpose, because that was supposed to be a direct to the lunar surface and return home vehicle to expedite tourist stuff. I think on that launch, we decided to revert because of a lack of MLI layers on the tank, so all the methane and oxygen would boil off by the time we get to Mars anyway, so decided we would need to relaunch. And so I'm reporting the fact that I reverted, uh, just because that is one of the rules. So uh, sometimes if the version isn't, a, uh, isn't my fault, like the game crashed or something like that, then I might not mention it, but... Or it's some other completely trivial thing. But this time it was my fault. I didn't put the MLI layers on, so... Anyway, we got to orbit, and this time we were able to conduct the transfer. And ultimately things went alright with this one, finally, after some... some earlier issues. Mistakes were made. But there we go with our approach. You'll need a mid-course adjustment to correct the inclination. We do want this in line with Phobos. So there it is. And we'll discover its fate in a later video. Next up, I decided to launch a tank of methane and oxygen out to Mars, and also to push the Kasei rocket to its limits by creating the Kasei Kerbal. This is basically the equivalent of the stock Kerbal orange tanks, and when you cluster six of them around, the core, which is also another orange tank, and then you cross-feed the fuel in the asparagus staging, I guess we call it. Anyway, so we dump off two boosters at a time kind of thing. So yes, the Kasei Kerbal. The Kasei Kerbal Edition. And off it goes. We have all been through this with Kerbal Space Program before. <laughs> the seven core version of our rockets. And off go the first pair. And they basically rip themselves apart there. The aerodynamic stresses are too great. And the next pair. Off they go. And again, the fuel is cross-feeding through, so that's why those get finished so quickly and the final pair. And finally, ultimately, the core accidentally gets into orbit. I didn't really mean for that to happen. I should have stopped that earlier and let the upper stage finish orbit. We sized the payload so that the upper stage would have just enough to finish orbit and then transfer. You can see we had 3,700 meters per second remaining there. And so that's why the payload was sized where it is, but uh, it turns out that the core could have lifted a little bit heavier in upper stage than it actually did. So anyway, this is on its way to Mars uh, to be a tank. And next up I decided to see what the Kasei Kerbal could do to low Earth orbit. And so I think we're pushing more than 600 tons there. But we left off the upper stage because it's unnecessary in this case, right? So we're just lifting it with the cores. It goes this uh, very Kerbal assembly now. There have been rockets designed like this. I'm not saying it's a good idea, but 
in an emergency. This isn't really an emergency. This is just a launch of opportunity, basically. I, I just wanted to try it out. And so we'll see. Will it get the payload to orbit and exactly how much is it? And off go the final pair. And finally, uh, well, a little bit closer to the limit there. And there we have a payload well over 600 tons, but we have to lift its orbit a bit so that it's more usable. It's a little bit too low. Other things would have to rendezvous with it. It is just a fuel depot with methane and oxygen right now. Lots and lots of methane and oxygen. And we'll see what use we put to it. I honestly don't remember if I ever... I, I might have completely forgotten about it and never used it, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so, uh, confession. I also decided to try to launch a food, water, and oxygen tank, but I, I'm keeping this one short. Uh, this did not make orbit. We didn't have enough. So, uh, to change our trajectory a little bit, we did require the upper stage for this. I don't know if it was better or worse to have the upper stage. Anyway, up this goes for what ultimately was the successful depositing of this depot. Off go those boosters, and yes, they're ripping apart. That's why the game was laggy right there, was trying to decide how to explode them. And the next set. And the final set. This is just such a rarity in realism overhaul that I'm lingering on the asparagus staging of the Kasei Kerbal. And we're a little bit short on Delta V still, so I'm trying to give the payload time to make sure it can make orbit. It does have fuel on it. It's got methane oxygen engines, just very small methane oxygen engines, so they have a long burn time. I decided to offload some of the food, water, and oxygen to help it out. Not not a huge amount, I mean maybe like uh, 10, between 10 and 20 percent and ultimately this did make orbit. So we are doing low earth orbit depots finally but the trick here is will I remember that we have done low earth orbit depots in further streams? Well we'll see. Anyway, now that I've reminded myself maybe I'll make use of them now. But anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.